Men on the front lines. Men on the front lines. Men on the front lines. We call for these mighty men of valor. The Lord put a vision in my heart for a new movement amongst men in the body of Christ. The Lord says that I'm going to make champions out of those who would gather unto me. And I believe what men on the front lines will do. And I see it going into the nations. He's going to raise the bar among men. It's time for heroes to arise. I'm Robert Hodgkin, and this is Heroes Arise. Men on the Front Line social media broadcast, encouraging, equipping, and empowering you to arise as the hero, the warrior, and the champion that God created you to be. You matter, you are important, and you have a key role to play for the kingdom and the earth. So I'm grateful you're joining me again this week so we can continue to pour into you. And guys, we are going to pour into you this week. We're going to talk about a topic that may make you want to turn this broadcast off, but don't. We're going to talk about intimacy. And you know, sometimes as guys, intimacy makes us uncomfortable or the idea of it makes us uncomfortable, but it's so kingdom. God's all about intimacy. He's all about relationship. For God so loved the world, he sent his son. Jesus in the upper room, his final prayer for us is that we would be one with the Father as he was one with the Father. And in that, we'd all be one together. John 15, one of my favorite chapters in the New Testament, is all about intimacy, where Jesus talks about us being in him and him being in us and how to abide in that. As we learn to be intimate with God, it's going to make us better friends, better husbands, better brothers, better businessmen. We're going to learn how to know God's love, be secure in God's love, and be able to express it in a multitude of ways that's going to make us stronger, more masculine men that are part of the solution the world needs right now. And just before I introduce our special guest that we're going to get into this topic on with for you, I've got one quick announcement for you. November 21 through 23, mark your calendars. We've got another man camp event coming up in Lake Hughes, California. And guys, if you're looking for a chance to unplug from the busyness of life, get away from your schedule and pressure for a weekend, come to Man Camp. It's a great chance to connect with a great group of guys in the great outdoors. We'll have mentoring and teaching times, of course, but we'll also have great fellowship times. And we're going to have all sorts of fun things to do from volleyball to basketball to get this. Where we'll be staying, the campgrounds will be staying in the cabins. They have a competitive paintball course, and every afternoon we're going to be out on the paintball course having a blast. So mark your calendar, November 21 through 23, Lake Hughes, California. You can go to menonthefrontlines.com and click the events link, and it will give you all sorts of information. But if it's easier for you, just email me directly, robert at menonthefrontlines.com, and I will get you that info link and answer any questions you have. But I want to see you at our next man camp in November. All right, let's get into this topic. Rick Pino. Thank you so for being So good to here. be here with you, man. Thank we, you for having me. We are me. having such a good time. You're here, part of an event that we're doing right now, and as always, your worship is amazing. Thank you. And in getting to know you a little bit over the last year, some events we've been together, I've always known, I knew your worship music before I knew you, but in getting to know you as a man, one of the things that's impressed me the most is not only a worshiper, not only a worship leader, but um, a wonderful husband, a wonderful father, a, a uh, dedicated to raising up others in the areas. And for what I see from you, it all comes from this revelation of sonship and intimacy. So you're the perfect guy for us to talk to about this, because as guys, I think it's important that we get good at intimacy. 100%. And, and, and I know that, that so much people could say, well, yeah, but he's a worshiper and a worship leader. But really, that gift of yours, that performance of yours, that ability of yours comes from intimacy and relationship. You don't do it for intimacy and relationship. And that's one of the keys for us as guys. I always go to Mark 111. The father declared over his son, you are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Yep. He launched him out into, yep. his, into his call, into his ministry, into what he was to do in the earth with the declaration of love and acceptance, intimacy. And Jesus did everything from that, so he never had to do anything for that. And that's our model. And you model that really well to us. So share with us a little bit how as guys we can learn to be comfortable with and even enjoy intimacy. Absolutely. Well, man, first of all, it's an honor to be here with you today. Thank you so much for having me. 
Um, yeah, I, this subject is fascinating to me because of the culture that we live in today that yeah. is so perverted. Mm -hmm. We instantly connect intimacy with sexuality. Right. And so for men, because of things like pornography and perversion and all these things, we don't want to go there with God because it's it's got a stigma attached to it. When we say intimacy, we think it's we think instantly think it means sexuality. Yeah. But what we learn from one of the people who is perhaps maybe the most intimate besides Jesus, King David. Right. What we learn about intimacy from King David is that intimacy is not necessarily just a sexual thing. It's actually more about becoming a student yeah. of emotions. Yeah. And I think, mm. I think what we learned from King David is as a worshiper, because David was not just a sweet psalmist. Right. He was a king, he was a politician, he was a father, Warrior. he was a murderer, yeah. he was an adulterer, he right. was all of these things, but his identity didn't come from the good parts or the bad parts. His identity came from one thing have I asked, one wow. thing do I seek, that I might dwell in your house and inquire, uh, gaze upon your beauty and inquire in your temple. Yeah. Same thing with Jesus. That's why Jesus is the greater David. But D King David showed us it all has to flow from this place of intimacy. So for me, intimacy is simply becoming a student of God's emotions. Mm. Intimacy with God is saying, Lord, what's on your heart? It's not necessarily like this boyfriend Jesus right. thing right. that, you know, that the world is kind of perverted right. the idea about intimacy with God. No, no, no. It's something so much more greater. It's about this. It's studying the emotions, the heart, the passion, you know, the, the glory, the beauty. David called it the beauty mm -hmm. of his holiness. It's studying the emotions of God, connecting with God in that deep fellowship kind of way. And then from that place, everything else is the byproduct. You know what I'm saying? I do. And I think what you're saying is really important because if we learn to study God's emotions, we'll get comfortable with ours. And I think 100%. as guys, that's 100%. one of the areas we wrestle is intimacy involves vulnerability. Yes. And vulnerability for us, it's not, I think so much of it is I'm uncomfortable crying, laughing, being real, showing emotion because it makes me vulnerable. And, but I think, I think for me, real intimacy comes from feeling secure in the relationship. And I think for guys, yes. so much, and you know, as a North American male in his 50s, I can say for North American culture, and really wherever I've gone in the world, world culture, I see it in Asia, I see it in Europe, I see it in North America. I've only been to Africa once, but I saw it there. I think most guys, we grow up with sort of a performance mentality. Yes. If I do good, I am good. If I do good, I get good. If I work hard, good things will happen. And so from that, we tend to think our safe place is in performing, as opposed to my safe place is with God. And intimacy comes from getting secure in that relationship so we yeah. can do anything. To me, really, what intimacy comes down to is the security of Hebrews 4, where God says, come to me, boldly come before my throne of grace in your time of need. Yes. Not boldly come before my throne of grace when you've been Johnny Super Christian and you know I'm proud of you. Yeah. For me, real intimacy with God, which helps me be more intimate with my wife, more intimate as a friend, being able to accept my friends wherever they are, being able to accept my wife wherever I am, wherever she is, so a real relationship can be established. For me, that's come from realizing I can go to my heavenly father, like for most of my life, I couldn't go to my earthly father. Mm -hmm. I'd go to my earthly father if I'd done good. I'd go to my earthly father if I made the family name look good. If I hadn't, I knew the best thing to do was just to avoid it, because the best thing I was gonna get was a scolding. And gratefully now, God has redeemed my relationship with my father, and we're actually quite friends, nice. quite good friends. But I learned that with the heavenly father. And you know, as a worshiper, I, I, every time I've been with you at an event, Rick, and you lead worship, the presence comes so powerfully. I don't know this, but I'm willing to bet part of the reason it comes so powerfully is because you've gone to God in worship on days when you haven't done so great. Of course. But you can 100%. but you can still know you can still hundred percent. Where did that security come from? I mean, I, I think the biggest thing is before we need we need a strong restoration of fathering. Yes. Uh, back in culture as well as obviously in church, but in all areas of culture. But before we can become fathers, 
we need to become sons. Mm. We need to know what that means to, to be a son. And I have deep intimacy with my children. And again, it's not necessarily a sexual thing, right? right it's not course. a sexual right, thing with my course. kids at all. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a study, it's a passion for their heart. What is your heart doing? You know what I'm saying? And yeah. when we, we learn this from Jesus, like you mentioned in the beginning, Jesus, before he had performed a single miracle, right. before That's he right. had done any, any right. ministry, the father said, I'm proud of you, yeah. son. And Jesus taught us out of all the incredible things that we learned about God in the Old Testament, he's the healer, he's the, the provider, he's the banner, he's our victory. Jesus wrapped all of it up and he said, God is all those yeah. things because he's a father. Right. So Jesus had the sonship thing down and it came from being a student yeah of the Father's right. heart, the Father's emotions. That's good. And I think as men, we need to lay down our pride mm -hmm. because you can only be vulnerable if you lay your pride down. Right. And uh, if we, we, if we uh, put our pride on a pedestal, we're not ever gonna see breakthrough in, in our own relationships and our own heart. And we're never gonna become the men that we need to be for our families, for our wives, our children, and for the economy and yeah, for right. our brothers and sisters, right. for the right. world. We need to lay our pride down. We need to become a student of God's emotions. And we need to understand that it is from the place of intimacy. Men think that success comes from achievement, right. but Jesus taught us success comes from belonging. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that um, when Jesus was teaching us to pray, which we always think, okay, that's about intercession, but really no, it's about through our lives, the kingdom being downloaded into the earth. Because the prayer was, our Father who is in heaven, holy be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We understand from the Mount of Transfiguration, what he declares to Peter, that we are the gates of heaven into the earth. Or not yes. from the Mount of Transfiguration, but the Mount when he said, who do you say that yeah, I am? Yeah. And he declares that we are the gates. What I love about that prayer, Rick, is he's not only teaching us to pray, he's teaching us how to be effective sons in the earth. And it all begins, and we, we know it so well, we're so familiar with it, we miss it. It all begins with our Father who is in heaven. Jesus 100%. is saying, my dad, your dad. Same relationship, same intimacy. It all begins there, guys. If we're gonna be effective for the kingdom in the earth, we need to realize we don't need to be effective for the kingdom in the earth to have relationship. Yeah. We have relationship, we have intimacy. And from that place then, we can go out and do whatever we want for the kingdom. I think one of the challenges we face as guys is when we allow that sonship, that intimacy, sometimes it's, it's, it's the father pouring out his love and acceptance on us. Always it's him pouring out his love and acceptance on it. Sometimes in that, there can be some correction. And I think because of how most of us grew up in modern culture, we think of correction as condemnation. We think of correction as you've been bad and you failed. And too often we hear, this was not a good thing you did, and we think it's being said, you're not good. And that's something that has to shift for us to have intimacy, because God will bring correction at yes. times, but it's not because he doesn't love us, or we've been bad, or we're disqualified. It's not to shame us, it's because he so believes in us. He wants to help get things out of the yes. way that will trip us up. Yes. Absolutely. So how do we learn to receive not only the love and acceptance, but in that love and acceptance, the correction so that we can become the fuller expression of who we're supposed for, to be? For me, it comes down to intentionality. Okay. Because the way that I kind of coach the dudes that I'm helping yeah. to raise up and yeah. is you can't become best friends with anyone on accident. Right. You know what I'm That's saying? That's true, right. You, you have to be intentional to go and to spend time with the Father. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it really comes down to this. Um, you know, Jesus was the most manly man right. that has ever walked the right. earth. And he said, I'm meek, I'm humble of spirit. Yeah. Like he was willing to go there with the Father uh, in that place of intimacy and in that place of, of trust. Because here's what I've found, when you're, when you're intentional to build that relationship, yep. you are going to understand the context whenever those times of correction do have to come, there's gonna be a trust that comes, you go, no, he loves me right. dearly. And the, right. the reason why the correction is happening is because he wants me to, to be better and it's healthy yeah. for me. Yes. And it doesn't come from an orphan mindset of like, oh, I'm scared and right. I've been bad. No, 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 it's, it's this, hey son, less of this, more of that. Right. 
Keep going. Good job, yeah. buddy. I you believe know what I'm in saying? you. You're doing great. Yes, That's right. Yes. That's right. And we're only going to get to that place of understanding sonship and intimacy yeah. with the Father uh, whenever we're intentional to go there. I know for me, one of the big shifts came when God showed me something that was in my mind that was not correct, even about the very beginning. When Adam and Eve were kept out of the garden, a lie got in. As somebody who didn't grow up in the church, this was all new to me. I didn't even get saved till I was almost 40. Um, and there was a part of me that was like, oh, they messed up. And they did. So they got kicked out. And God had to show me he was not punishing them. He was protecting them. That the reason that he set the guard there wasn't, I'm mad at you, you're disqualified. He didn't kick them out. They kicked themselves out yeah. by choosing to rebel. Yeah. He put the seraphim there because if he didn't, he loved them so much. If they had eaten of the tree of life, they would have been forever in that fallen state. And he knew he had something better for them. That was huge to me because I realized, wait a minute. This whole kingdom's about love and acceptance. Anything God does that is correction or even discipline, it's for my good. And it's not even that, you know, it's going to sting, it's going to hurt, but I guess it's for my good. But it's realizing this is an ouch hallelujah. You know, discipline sometimes is challenging. You know, it, it hardly ever feels good. But when you realize what you're talking about, Rick, that he loves us so much that if he brings correction, it's not because he's mad at us. It's not because he's punishing us. It's not because we're disqualified. It's because he so believes in us yes. that he wants to help things that would limit us from operating the fullness of what he has for 100%. us. 100%. And bringing it back to the David piece, like what we see the difference between Saul and David is that David had the relationship part down right. and Saul was doing it all for works. Right. It was all this religious, yes. even the jargon, he was like, oh my God, and blah. And he was using yes. all this religious language and David's like, no man, David blew it just as much right. as Saul. totally. But the difference was David had the relationship part down. So there's a context right. between him and God. There's a relationship, there's a trust between him and God. One thing I'm seeing, my daughter just turned 10 years old. She's a sweetheart. And one thing I've, I've just been so blessed by in seeing her grow is that there's been so much trust between uh, her and her mother and I that she, if she does something that she knows is not right, it's to the point now where she actually brings it yeah. to us. We don't have to figure it out or yeah. you know sniff it out or right. find out from the grapevine. She just goes, hey, this thing came up on my YouTube show or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. whatever she's, and we go, hey, well, thank you so much for, and it's That's not great. even, it's not even a correction. There's so much trust. Right. There's so much intimacy there that it's not like this heavy handed. It's more like, I really appreciate yeah. you wanting to tell me this to protect what we have yeah. in our relationship. And I think, again, if men could be intentional mm -hmm. to grow in this with yep. the father, it, even the corrections aren't, aren't this heavy handed thing anymore. It's, it's love, it's intimacy, and it's becoming students of the father's emotions of his heart. Yeah, a, a guy that I'm involved with mentoring, he, he brought something to me and he even said, I'm, I'm almost afraid to bring this to you. I've been wrestling with it for a really long time. Here's the issue. And I said, actually, I'm really grateful you did. I could tell something was going on. And could you tell how it created like a wall between us? Because there's a there was like this no-go zone that you were hiding. And he, he said, well, I, I, I was ashamed of this. I said, well, we don't deal with shame in the kingdom. And I said, I'm really grateful that you brought this to me. If there's conviction around this area, that's a good thing. That's a real good thing. I said, but what I want to look at more than anything is why did you hide it from me? When you know I'm for you, you know I believe in you. And, and, and I knew the answer was, well, I felt I'd be disqualified. So yeah. then I said, okay, what were you afraid of losing in that? Because I want to look at the fear that caused you to hide this as much as what the behavior was. Because God can deal with all of it. And, and what was really great is on the other side of it, there was more trust because he was able to say, I, I, I can bring something to you and you might have some correction for me, but I'm, I'm still your friend. We're still in yes. a relationship. I said, if not, I've failed, not you failed. Because with the Father, we're always in I got came into the kingdom, Rick, after almost four decades of mocking and persecuting Christians. I came into the kingdom because God manifested himself to me. And what he declared to me is, I refuse not to love you. Wow. And that blew me away. I came in with this declaration of the certainty of relationship that 16 years later, I'm still figuring out. But that to me is the key. So, okay, we're getting short on time, but what keys can you give our audience and how to grow? Because it's, it's great to talk about all this and I can feel people out there going, I do want that, but I do hesitate in some areas. How do we 
not push through that, but allow God to push through that for us. 100%. I mean, it comes back to what I've been talking about with intentionality. Okay. Okay. Like, if I want a deep connection with my wife, I have to be intentional to date her. All right. Even though we've been married for 12 years. If I want a deep connection with my children, I have to be intentional to date them, to spend time with them. If I want to become great friends with somebody, I have to make time. And I think, you know, a lot of men watching out there today, I know they're busy, they right. have families, they right. have job, business, all this stuff. I get it. But you know, in the context of life, especially when you become a father and a husband and all this stuff, um, I tell single young guys, when you're single with less responsibilities, yes. yeah. do quality and quantity. Yes. But whenever you're married with responsibilities, do quality, right. man. Right. Do quality. Right. Just be consistent. Okay. What, like if you can show up for 10 minutes a day and have quality time, that's way better than once in a blue moon with True. God. So guys, what that can look like for you, um, which at, wherever you are in the spectrum, whether it's quality and quantity or quality um, because you're super busy, maybe that looks like making a quality decision every morning you spend 15 minutes. And yeah. if you can do a half hour, great. If you can do an hour, great. If you can do two hours, great. But don't let the enemy steal from you because you feel like if I don't do two hours, it's worthless. No, are you kidding me? 15 minutes of Bible time. Yes. Read your Bible and ask God questions about it if, if it's not clicking. Or 15 minutes of worship music. Yes. Or decide every morning, I'm going to put on one worship song and sing it to God and then go into your Bible time yeah. or your prayer time. So little things like that, things you already know how to do, but don't make it I have to, choose to believe it's I get to where I am spending time. Any other things that are practical that they can apply? Bible time, worship? Uh, I mean, it. we always wanna make it about these big moments, like right. do a 40 day fast or right. whatever, and I know you're not, you're not insinuating yeah. that, but I'm saying for those watching, it's not about the big moments. The big moments are just the cherry on right. top. It's actually the everyday consistency that mm -hmm. walks us to the big moments. So read your Bible, Good. talk to God. Yeah. Like simple consistency, man, that's the key to all of it. And that's something you can do throughout your day. I mean, honestly, get in the habit of talking to God like he's there because he is. And on the days you feel him, great, but he's just as much there when you, when you, when you don't feel him. So I do it all the time to the point of where I've, I was going to say I've embarrassed myself, but I'm not embarrassed by it. I, I have startled people around me because I'll be at Costco and out loud without even thinking about it, I ask God a question. I've had people turn to me and say, are you talking to me? It's like, no, no, sorry, sorry. And I realized to go under my breath. But, you know, I love what you're saying. It's not about the big moments. It's about the consistent little moments. Because, again, go back to other relationships we know with my wife. We're both so busy. Our big moments come a few times a year usually, sure, sure. because even in the limited amount of time we have, we're, we try to be consistent yes. about being there for each other as friends. I mean, even, even the men watching in business yes. or jobs, you know, that big contract or that big sale, right, or whatever, right. it came from the consistent relationship it's really building. It's it's con it's the small consistency that adds up over time, man. Yeah. That's how it works with God. Yeah. All right, well, you walk in this so beautifully. To close things out, I'm going to ask you, Rick, to look into your camera and pray a blessing, a grace, whatever you feel to over the audience yeah. so that we can all grow in this. Absolutely. Jesus, thank you so much that you are releasing a, a Jesus kind of masculinity over mm -hmm. every man watching right now that is deeply rooted in intimacy, not sexual intimacy, but intimacy that comes from becoming students of your heart, Lord, students of your emotions. Lord, I pray that there would be an unlock for everybody watching today and that you would help all of us to be more faithful in the little in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Rick, yeah. thank you so much. so much. Man. Really appreciate thank you. you being here. I thank you for being here. Don't forget, November 21 through 23, our next Man Camp event in Lake Hughes, California. Feel free to email me, robert at menonthefrontlines.com for more information or go to menonthefrontlines.com and click the event link. While you're at menonthefrontlines.com, do me a favor, click that donate button and sow into this program and sow into what God is doing amongst his sons around the world through Men on the Front Lines. You are a part of that. So please sow into that and help us continue to do everything God has for us to bless, encourage, and empower his sons around the world. Thank you so much. We will see you here for another Heroes Arise soon.